In the last video, we left off with creating page numbers. So we used our master sheets to import those page numbers onto both pages. And then we went through and made a cover page without any page numbers on it. And then we also made the first page, which is really like page number two, um, show as page number one. And so if you missed how to do that, please go back and watch the first part of this video to learn how. Okay, so now we're going to actually take a look at page uh, headers and and how to create a consistency and a shortcut in keeping our formatting so text style uh, font style um, whether it's bold different sizes uh, we can basically set up a nice template in our master pages and then I can show you a way to override that on each page in particular if you would choose to do so so I'm gonna go up to my master page here I'm double clicked in and here I started dragging in some guides uh, if you don't like the guides, you can click on the direct selection tool and drag it off. The rulers here, oftentimes uh, that's like in like a view tab, um, you can display rulers. Um, here I have like a hide rulers options, grids and guides. You know, there's a lot of ways to like set up your file to end up showing um, show rulers here. And then to show up to, to uh, set up your your screen to be accurate. So I definitely recommend turning on rulers. And then from there, you can right click on the ruler and say, all right, set to inches or centimeters, whatever you choose to do. All right, now from here, what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna end up dragging in some guides to divide my page into thirds. So I have an 11 by uh, 17 spread. So 11, 17, and it comes in a half inch on either side so I have 16 inches left over in between here and so out of those 16 I have 8 and then if I want to I can actually use this this box here to get my diagonals real quick uh, within my margins and so oh yeah I had dragged that it should be eight and a half so let me uh, grab that guide again and go to eight and a half. That's our center. And then to quickly divide up into thirds geometrically, what I need to do is find the halfway point on this, this, uh, this diagonal here from the center. So I'm going to drag a guide and split that down. So in order to find a quick halfway point, we can just draw another X on the screen, this is halfway in between there. And then I can drag out a guide and I can put it right on this grip edit that's in the middle, should hit pretty much true. And then we can do the same on the other side. So I'm gonna drag out a box and this X should land in the middle of this diagonal. I'm gonna drag out and split that right down the middle. So now I have basically where each line is, is uh, at quarters on the page. Oh, and then at these intersections should be my thirds. These intersections are my thirds. So these are my quarters. And then I had misspoke before. These intersections right here are my thirds. And you can fine tune that later. Now, if I don't want the quarters anymore, what I can do is uh, drag off those guidelines. And to drag off a guideline, I just grab it. And then I slide it off the page to the ruler, back to the ruler where it came. And then I can delete out these boxes as well. And so now I've divided up my page really quickly, if I didn't want to use any math, into thirds going in one direction, and you can apply that to whatever you want. Since I've done this on the master page, it's going to show up as guides on all my other pages. So now I have a quick reference for thirds, which um, tends to make things look really nice in a layout. So I like throwing in thirds on my master pages to just help me have a quick reference and snap point for some things I want to set up. Now while I'm doing this, I'm going to throw in some boxes. And I know I did say we're going to add some text. Don't worry, I did not forget about that. Um, so I'm going to throw in a box, and then I'm going to hit the control button and shift button like we learned in the last video to copy and slide orthographically in a line my elements here then if i hold down shift i can select multiple items if i hold down alt and hit the scroll wheel i can zoom out 
And then if I hold down Shift and Alt, I can copy and slide again over to my next page. So now I've quickly made third columns across my master pages, which then populate the rest of my booklet. All right, so we're making some progress. Now I could throw in additional boxes or subtract some, make them unique. We can also make more master pages by just clicking on the additional page. Um, so I've just made a B master and a C master right there real quick. So I double clicked real fast. So here's an A master, here's a B master. I can copy my master page from the A onto the master page from the B and then modify that so I can quickly change things about it. So to do that, I can show that later. Let me get to the text that's in the top. So under A master on the left side, I can actually highlight both if I would like. Hold on shift. There we go. So I can draw a text box and within this text box, I can put some placeholder text so I can change my text style to what I want. I have starred the text that I want to use and then I do a filter based on the star. And then from there, I'm going to go in and throw in some regular text. And I like to increase that to like 36 and 18. I find myself very commonly using. Um, so I'm going to go with like 18 here for like these kind of like a minimalist look at the top. And I'm going to go in and just call this project one. And then I'm going to go in and create another text box. I'm going to click out in another text box here. I'm going to throw in, um, actually, let's go back and edit that text real quick. Do a little slash. And I'm going to keep that real nice and tight because that's going to be something that doesn't change throughout my project or I don't plan on it changing. And then I'm going to go to my text box. I'm going to make a, another text box right here. And I'm going to keep that landing inside the thirds if possible. And I'm going to go and go to, let's just say like a bold style. And I'm going to keep that at 18 as well to match. And here I'm just going to put an X for something that I plan on changing all the time. And then I'm going to take these two items. I'm going to do Alt Shift. I'm going to slide them over right over here. Now, if you do a mirror command, it's going to make it go. Uh, it's going to literally mirror it. So you're going to read your text backwards. So I don't recommend doing that. So what I do recommend doing is taking this text, holding down shift, sliding it over, double clicking in, taking the slash. If you want to mirror it this way, it's up to you. And then delete out and make it right justified. And then do the same with this other text. We're going to make this right justified. We're going to slide it close. I'm going to double click in and I'm going to say right justification. And now we've created the mirror that we want. Now with this text on my master pages, notice my cover's unaffected based on what we did in the last video. If I go into page one, I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna hold down control shift. That's the magic combination. So I'm gonna hold down control shift and then I'm gonna click in on this text box and now I can edit it. Now I can say project one and then maybe here I say, you know, site analysis. And if I really like how this is going, I would just go through, copy, control C, click out. I could go through, control shift, click, double click in, highlight, control V to paste. And then I don't even have to click out. I can just do control shift, click, highlight, control V to paste. And now as my, maybe my chapter changes here, or maybe my project in a portfolio changes, I can just go and copy and paste in a, a new subtitle that goes with project one. If I really wanted to change project one, I can do that too. Even though I typed in there, I can go and I can change that. So maybe this says then project two. So that's uh, text editing. Um, to get into the boxes, we'll do that in part three in the next video. I hope you like what you're seeing. This has been a huge help for me learning a couple of these command shortcuts and how InDesign lays out. And so uh, I just figure I would pass that along to you. 
Um, if you don't want to miss out on any other future videos, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Don't forget to save.